wadering up. Woo! Whoa! Oh, it's very slimy. We're literally standing on the food of the future <laughs> yes. right now. This is the foundation of the next generation of farming and food. By 2050, the world's population will hit almost 10 billion. It's going to take up to a 70% increase in food production to feed those 2.5 billion extra mouths. To survive, we need to reinvent the way we farm and eat. There's a few people in the middle of the New Mexican desert who believe they have a tiny green protein-rich solution, algae. Why does it smell like the ocean here in the middle of the desert? the salty water that we use. The strain of algae that we grow has been isolated from the northern Atlantic Ocean, so we try to make it as close to the ocean as we can. Well, it certainly smells like it. <laughs> this algae is called nanochloropsis. Unlike most crops, it doesn't require fresh water to flourish. That's a big deal. Today, 70% of the planet's available fresh water goes towards crops and raising livestock. The beauty of our harvesting system is that we're able to recycle 95 to 97% of our water crystal clear and just keep using it over and over and over again. Water efficiency like that means you can farm algae in a desert. Why have your farm here? There's land as far as the eye can see that's not being used for anything else. Uh, we're on top of a salty water aquifer, which is what our algae needs. And when it comes to solving this potential food shortage, land matters. About 37% of the land on this planet is dedicated to agriculture. As farmland grows scarce, algae offers an alternative. Many more harvests, no fertile soil required. One of the interesting things about algae that leads to the much more higher yield than traditional crops is actually that we do this year round. With corn, you plant once, you harvest once. Right. But this stuff, we might harvest a single pond as much as two or three times a week. Despite all these qualities that make algae such an attractive crop, it's algae's value as food that's most remarkable. Iwi says this strain is about 40% protein and contains all of the essential amino acids humans need. This is the final product from the farm. This is your green gold right here. Yes, ma'am. Meat has those nutrients too, but it uses up a lot more of our finite resources like water and land, not just for the animals, but to grow their food too. As for other plant proteins, some estimates say that algae can produce seven times the amount of protein that soybeans could on the same amount of land. Yeah, it's just salty, just salty. Can't believe I just did that, but it was... <laughs> The thing about food, though, people have to eat it. Hi. Hello, Rachel. How are you? Miguel Calatayud is the CEO of Iwi. It's his job to convince the world that pond scum should be on the menu. People think of algae and they go, ugh, they don't go yum. The protein we are producing is not going to be green, it's not going to change the flavor, it's not going to be any different from what they are used to. This is the success. When people see algae as another vegetable. So different than broccoli. Not different at all. Algae is one of the most productive vegetables that you can find in Earth. And at the same time, is one of the most sustainable ones. We are not bringing algae as an alternative. This is in addition to conventional crops. Miguel and Rebecca aren't the first people to recognize the unique power of this tiny marine plant. People have been working on algae since at least the early 50s, trying to figure out how to do what it is that we're doing. And most of them have been unsuccessful. In the early 2000s, algae was championed as an excellent source of biofuel. But the prohibitively high cost of harvesting and processing made the biofuel boom go bust. Iwi is staking its future on a different approach, that in order for algae to scale, growing it has to be as easy as growing any other crop. We talk about it as farming on purpose because we want to break the paradigm that algae is industrial microbiology, that it's biotech, but that's not what we're doing. The first step towards algae a la carte, supplements. Today, Iwi is packaging this algae into omega-3 soft gels. It's a market valued at more than $33 billion. But you don't save the world with supplements and smoothies. 
EB has much bigger goals. They want their algae's protein infused in everyday foods. So this cookie here, it's just kind of like an enhanced cookie in that it'll have more protein in yes. it. Yes, so this is, I would like you to yeah, try it. Yeah, this yeah. is a regular you keep going cookie. going back to the cookie, I'm ready to eat it the looks, cookie. And it just has omega-3, omega-6, omega-7, and a significant amount of protein, uh -huh. but it tastes pretty good. Go okay. ahead. Tastes like a normal, like a sugar cookie. Yeah, I've been in the food business for 20 years, and that is the key success. The product needs to be healthy, but it needs to taste tastes good. good. This is the beginning, one step at a time. Algae for dinner is a long shot, but the powerful potential of this tiny super crop can't be ignored.